Um, so let's take a look now at the economical councils. The economical councils were the various councils that met uh, between the third century and the 20th century. Um, so the economical councils, they consist of both the Catholic Church and the uh, Orthodox Church. And so we need to understand what economical means. Economical means worldwide. The first seven economical churches which define the Catholic Church existed between 325 and 787 AD. So the economical councils exist to establish church law through its various canons or laws. In the history of Christianity, the first seven economical councils included the following. The Council of Nicaea in 325, the Council of Constantinople in 381, the Council of Ephesus in 431, the Council of Chalcedon, Chalcedon in 451, the Second Council of Constantinople in 553, the Third Council of Constantinople from 680 to 681, and finally the Second Council of Nicaea in 787, and this information comes from the article titled First Seven Economic Councils off of Wikipedia. The 21 economical councils, economical councils of the Catholic Church established church laws or councils. The church established some 2,865 laws for regulatory purposes. This outnumbers the laws in the Torah uh, by about five to one, because there's only about 613 commandments in the Torah. It's interesting how the Catholic Church saw that they need to come up with, with almost 3,000 laws, and, and none, probably most of them don't even include the majority of the Torah-based laws. God already gave us his laws for the church to be governed by. That's called the Torah. So there's really no need to come up with church laws. So we look at Deuteronomy 12.32, which says, Whatever thing soever I command you, observe it to do it. Thou shalt not add to it, nor take away from it. So this is what we have done in church law. We have added to God's law, and we have taken from it. And that's why we have the mess that we have today, why we are so confused about the Sabbath day and about Sunday. Uh, Catholics established church laws in their forms of canons at their economical councils. Much of God's laws were ignored, whereas the Catholics reinvented the wheel, so to speak. So these doctrines of man that they established violate the doctrines of God. Let's take a look at Matthew 5.19. It says, Whosoever shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach them so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So this is what we have done in our churches, not just the Catholic churches, a lot of the evangelical churches, Protestant churches. We have taught people that the Sabbath is not binding today. We have taught that Sunday was replaced Saturday. And so when we teach these things, we become least in the kingdom of God. According to Catholic.com, this is what they have to say about canon law. Every organization, whether secular or religious, requires its own laws and customs in order to maintain order. Within the Catholic Church, the internal, internal legal system that governs its day-to-day -day workings is known as canon law. We need only think of the Ten Commandments as an example of how God has given law to his people. The new covenant of Christ gave birth to a new set of laws for the Christian community. So did you hear that, what they say? They say that the new covenant of Christ gave birth to a new set of laws for, for the Christian community. They go on to say that the church does not need an, a, a set of canon law 
but it has chosen to use such a structure. Canon law deals with the day-to-day -day affairs of the church. According to the Wikipedia article entitled Canon Law, they say this, Canon law, from the Greek word kanon, means a straight measuring rod or ruler. It is a set of ordinances and regulations made by ecclesiastical authority, meaning church leadership, for the government of a Christian organization or church and its members. So we don't, we don't need church law to govern how we, how we are to walk as Christians. We just need God's Bible. According to Cardus.ca, they say about church law, the most fundamental source for all the church's law is that which is contained in Scripture, especially the New Testament. The New Testament provides numerous clear instructions for various aspects of Christian life. Canon law develops in a more formalized sense following the first third centuries of the Christian church. So, we have to understand that a lot of New Testament doctrine comes from Old Testament scripture. So the New Testament really becomes a commentary on the Old Testament. I'm sure we've all heard about how the Old Testament is um, kind of um, brings into light the truths of the New Testament. And the New Testament um, is revealing the truths of the Old Testament. And so w we don't need to have canonized law to give us um, how we're supposed to walk our Christian lives. That's what we have um, the New Testament and the Old Testament for. So um, this article talks about that the New, uh, the New Testament um, gives us church law. Well, I would disagree with that a little bit to say that the Old Testament and the New Testament is to provide for church law, not not the laws that the Catholic Church or, or Protestant churches come up with about how we're supposed to walk. Um, if you look at a lot of these canonized laws, they don't have anything to do with, a lot of them don't have anything to do with um, Scripture. Um, from his book, Manual of Canon Law, Father Matthew Ramstein writes, each economical council developed a series of canons that formed church law and doctrine. And so if we look at a lot of these economical councils about the canons they developed, we can see how they form the basis of uh, Catholic church law and uh, we can see how each series of canon laws added on to the next one to form the thousands of uh, economical canonized laws that the, ca that the Catholic Church formed uh, or used to form their catechism. In the Catholic Church, canon law is the system of laws and legal principles made and enforced by the Church's hierarchical authorities to regulate its external organization and government and to order and direct the activities of the Catholics towards the mission of the church. From catholic.com on their article, The Economical Councils, they, they, they list all of the different uh, economical councils they have had between uh, 325 AD and 1965 AD. So we have this list of economical councils uh, the, which are Nicaea I, Constantinople I, Ephesus, Chalcedon, Constantinople II, Constantinople III, Nicaea II, Constantinople IV, Lateran I, Lateran II, Lateran III, Lateran IV, Lyons I and II, Vienne, uh, Constance, Florence, Lateran V, Trent, Vatican I, and Vatican II. And this all comes from the Catholic.com magazine article 
the 21 economical councils. Christian Protestants continue to observe some of the councils that were established in the economical councils. Some of them, some of these councils would involve Easter, Sunday, the Nicene Creed, and the canonization of Scripture. In the Wikipedia article, the First Council of Nicaea, it writes that the first economical council was that of A.D. 325, and that would be the Council of Nicaea. This economical council was the first effort to obtain consensus in the church through an assembly representing all of Christendom. And at this Council of Nicaea, there were about 318 bishops that met with Emperor Constantine to discuss church organization. And at this Council of Nicaea, they established the Apostles' Creed, prescribed a date for Easter, and established the divinity of Jesus among other, council, uh, other canons of church laws. So, the main thing that caused this Council of Nicaea to come together was this dispute over Arianism. And Arianism was a non-Trinitarian Christological doctrine which asserted the belief that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, was begotten by God the Father, at a point in time, a creature distinct from the Father and is therefore subordinate to Him, but the Son is also God, as in God the Son. This Arian concept of Christ is based on the belief that the Son of God did not always exist, but was begotten within time by the God the Father. And so this information comes to us by the Wikipedia article entitled Arianism. So the, Ni the Nicene Council met to talk about this dispute that was dividing the church uh, between this Arianism concept and the concept that God, is, uh, that Jesus was God. And so they met to dispute, um, have this dispute and to talk about um, in a formalized way of who Jesus was, to establish his deity and his divinity. At the Council of Nicaea, they, uh, they established the Apostles' a Creed, and at this council it was resolved to celebrate um, what, they, what they call Pascha on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring equinox after the Jewish Passover. So in their, in their Catholic law, they didn't want anything to do with the Passover, so they made up their church law that has set up a way of how to establish the date of Easter, which they keep to to this day. So, um, uh, in the church today, when they keep the date of Easter, they're adhering to Catholic law. And so, this information comes to us from orthodoxphotos.com. Uh, so, at this Council of Nicaea, they're establishing not only the Apostles' Creed, but they're establishing when Easter will be kept. Uh, so they're totally uh, disregarding when the biblical feast of Passover actually happens. In fact, they don't want anything to do with Passover. They're setting up their own way of, of celebrating the resurrection. So at this Council of Nicaea, they're resolving the Arian debate over the deity of Jesus. And this is the first of many councils that would begin the process of establishing church laws. Um, one, the next um, council that I want to talk to you about that was significant in establishing the change of Sabbath to Sunday is the Council of Laodicea. So this Council of Laodicea met in AD 367 with about 30 clerics. And so this is not really considered an economical council, but it's called a synod council. And so a synod council is a localized meeting and it doesn't involve all of the clerics representing the Catholic Church. So this is why there's only 30 representatives there. So it's not an economical council, but a synod council. Synod councils were localized and didn't include all of the bishops. 
So um, according to uh, newadvent.org, they report that canon, not, canon number 29 uh, shows how they formally reject the Sabbath day and institute Sunday. It says, Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day rather honoring the Lord's day. So they have set up Sunday as the Lord day, as Lord's day at the Council of Laodicea, doing away with the Sabbath day. Um, so turning to this article of the Council of Laodicea at Wikipedia, it talks about the 60 councils of church law that were established at the Council of Laodicea. Uh, so at, Laod at the Council of Laodicea, some of the things they, they established was maintaining order among the bishops, the clerics, and the lay people. They enforced modest behavior among their clerics and lay people. They regulated an approach to heretics and pagans. They outlawed the keeping of the Sabbath and instituted the rest day of Sunday. They outlawed liturgical practices, made up the restrictions regarding Lent, and they had an admission and instruction of catech catechumens and neophysites, and they specified a biblical canon which we keep to today. Um, in the Orthodox Wiki article entitled Seventh Economical Council, we talk about they talk about the seventh and last economical council upheld the, the, the icon positions in AD 787. They proclaimed icons are to be kept in churches and honored with the same relative veneration as shown to other material symbols, such as the precious and life-giving cross and the book of the Gospels. The doctrine of icons is tied to the orthodox teaching that all God's creation is to be redeemed and glorified, both spiritual and material. So at, the, at this council of, of um, the second council of Nicaea, they are venerating the icons. Having them in churches and homes is what the church teaches. They are open books to remind us of God. Those who lack the time of learning to study theology need only to enter a church to see the mysteries of the Christian religion unfolded before them. So what they're doing here at this council is they're, they're, they're making it okay for people to have idols, to have icons, to have pictures, so that they don't have to read their Bibles. They can just look at these pictures and say, oh yeah, we know, we know, we know, we know what that means because the Catholic Church is teaching us what that means. So what they're doing is they're keeping people in ignorance and making up their own doctrines. So when we're looking at these icons of, of Mary and Jesus and um, uh, the different disciples and stuff like that, um, they're, they're, um, they're actually promoting um, us to, to break one of the commandments, which is we're not supposed to um, make an idol and to worship it. And so they're, they're instituting this practice of having pictures of crosses, pictures of Jesus, pictures of uh, idols of Jesus, idols of Mary, idols of the disciples, and so on and so forth. So this is what this, um, this council is establishing. Um, and canon number eight of the second Nicene council, which is the seventh economical council, According to the Orthodox Wiki Article 7th Economical Council, it says in Canon 8 that Hebrews ought not to be received unless they have been converted in sincerity of heart. So what they're doing is they're trying, they're promoting this idea that we have in Christianity today is that we ought to go out and start converting Hebrews to Christianity. And like I said before, we're supposed to um, be grafted into Israel, and we're not supposed to be we're not supposed to be drafting Jews into Christianity. So, so in the seventh Economical Council 
article here in Orthodox Wiki, it goes on to say, since certain erring error in, in the superstitions of the Hebrews have thought to mock at Christ our Lord and feigning to be converting to the religion of Christ, do deny him, and in private and secretly keep the Sabbath and observe other Jewish customs. So they're, they're, they are lumping the Sabbath as a Jewish custom and not God's commanded law. They go on to say, we decree that such persons be not received to communion, nor to prayers, nor into the church, but let them be openly Hebrews according to their religion, and let them not bring their children to baptism, nor purchase or possess a slave. So, what they're saying here in this eighth canon of the Council of Nicaea, the second council of Nicaea, Economical Council, what they're saying here is they, they, they want to make sure that we convert Jews to Catholicism. What they're saying is they want to co convert Jews to their Christianity. What they're saying here is that um, we, we want to get all of the Hebrew out of the Jews and get, get the Catholic Christianity into them. And um, so... They're, what they're doing is, like I said before, is they're wanting to convert the Jews to Christianity instead of saying, we need to be part of Israel. Canon number eight, according to the OrthodoxChurchFathers.com says, but if any of them out of a sincere heart and in faith is converted and makes profession with his whole heart, and they're talking about the Jews, setting at naught their customs and observances, talking about, um, talking about how they're wanting to walk according to the Torah, and so that others may be convinced and converted. Such a one is to be received and baptized, and his children likewise, and let them be taught to take, to, let them take care to, let them, let them be taught to take care to hold aloof from the ordinances of the Hebrews. But if they will not do this, let them in no wise be received. So they want to make sure that the church is um, making themselves uh, apart from the, the Hebrews that want to, to walk in God's laws, to walk in God's commandments, to walk in God's statutes and ordinances. And they want to make sure that... Um, that the Jews are, are they're foregoing and ignoring God's laws and adhering to their laws. So they're, what they're doing here also is in their eighth, in this canon law, is that they are wanting to convert them from God's laws to their laws. Um, in the Seventh Economical Council article, Orthodox Wiki, it says the seventh and last economical council. This is a this is um, according to the to the Orthodox Church, and so you have to understand the Orthodox Church is different than the Catholic Church. So while they share a lot of similarities, one being the most important at our discussion is that the Roman Catholic Church adheres to the same laws of 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 um of hearing to sunday law as the um as the orthodox church so they both share this in um common about their different of their similarities but they 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 do have some differences in their theology so in these according to the the orthodox church the seventh and last economical council and they only recognize seven, the Orthodox, the Roman Orthodox Church only recognizes seven economical councils where the, um, where the, the Catholic Church, they, um, the Roman Catholic Church, they recognize all 20 of them. So the Orthodox Church says the seventh and last economical council upheld, upheld the Iconodal's position in 87. 87. This has to do with the icons and the idols. 
they proclaimed they are to be kept in churches and honored with the same relative veneration as shown to other material symbols, such as the precious and life-giving cross and the book of the Gospels. The doctrine of icons is tied to the orthodox teaching that all God's creation is to be redeemed and glorified, both spiritual and material. So they are venerating the icons, having them in churches and homes is what the church teaches. They are open books to remind us of God. Those who lack the time or learning to study theology need only to enter a church to see the mysteries of the Christian religion unfolded before them. And this is what the Orthodox Catholic Church teaches.